Good evening. I'm Rudabay Shabazi in tonight for Marnie Hughes, and we begin with breaking news in Ukraine. Russian forces shelling Europe's largest nuclear power station right now, battling for control of crucial energy. Officials say it's on fire. This is new video just into our newsroom. That plan accounts for one quarter of Ukraine's power generation. It is the second major strike from Russia in the last 24 hours. Just last night, Russian troops capturing Kherson, a port city near the Black Sea, and the first major Ukraine Ukrainian city to fall since the invasion began. Retired Lieutenant General Richard Newton is a former assistant vice chief of staff for the U.S. Air Force. He joins us live tonight. Uh, welcome. I first want to get your reaction to the Russians attacking this nuclear power plant. Well, good evening, Ruta Bay. Always good to be with you. Uh, it is a defining moment, I believe, in, in the invasion. Uh, you know, they've already, they already took Chernobyl, which is really a defunct power plant up to the north of, of Kyiv. But nonetheless, uh, they've had an eye on this plant, I think, to knock out the energy sources for, as you mentioned, uh, a large portion of the Ukraine energy is derived by this power plant. And so the fact that they're attacking it uh, shows that uh, really there are no targets off limits. And uh, it's still to be determined, but it appears that they're not only shelling this, the town that surrounds the power plant, but the power plant itself. Still no more to unpack on this, but uh, again, it, it seems to be uh, under attack and therefore uh, will be a loss, I think, for Ukraine. And you talk about no targets off limits. Let's talk about Putin shifting his tactics by targeting civilians in Ukraine. What is the aim? Well, the aim is he is remains off his timeline. You, we talk about that 40 mile convoy to the north of Kyiv or trying to encircle Kyiv, but uh, regarding uh, to the east and Kirk, Kirk Kyiv and so forth, uh, uh, now civilian targets are under the horrendous attack of Russian forces, which is not anything new out of the Russian playbook. If you go back to Chechnya back in 1999 and 2000. If you go back to Syria and the Syrian civil war in 2016 and, and so forth, uh, this is right out of the Russian playbook. If they cannot win against army or tactical forces on the battlefield, they'll start doing horrendous attacks uh, against civilians. And we're seeing that play out right now. But what is the aim? I mean, what is the goal here? Is it to get people so worn down with the war, civilians so worn down that they just give up their country? The aim is really to take the hearts and minds away from the people in terms of the, their morale, uh, any type of spirit to continue the fight. Uh, right now, the Ukrainian people have shown tremendous resolve. Their military has shown tremendous uh, resolve on the battlefield and certainly uh, extraordinary leadership from uh, President Zelensky. But once you start attacking the civilians uh, huddled either, you know, below ground or in safe places that are no longer safe. Uh, if you go back in history to the Battle of Britain, that's what Germany tried to do, but could not defeat the will of the British people. But nonetheless, tonight and for the next several days, you're going to see a very bloody mess and civilians are going to be caught in the crosshairs. And I'm afraid it's going to be very ugly. It is just so devastating, already so ugly. And we talk about uh, the unity of the Ukrainian soldiers, but now we're hearing more from the Russian soldiers, right? More reports coming out. The Ukrainians, on one hand, are unified. They're motivated to fight. They're motivated to defend their country. But the morale within the Russian military appears to be suffering. They're running out of food. They're running out of fuel, parts. Some of them are even refusing to fight. And they're not being opened with welcome arms, as Putin promised them. You've led troops. How important is morale when fighting for the military? Yeah, I, and my reports are, are matching yours as well. Morale is absolutely essential. Now, the advantage is to the Ukrainian people and the, the military because they're fighting on their home turf. They're fighting for their freedoms and their democracy. The invading force, as in the Russians, are not. And they have extended their lines of communication or their supply lines, as we as we mentioned. That is a morale because once you start out of food and out of gas and you can't move, uh, and you're also uh, meeting a stiff resistance from the Ukrainian uh, military, that has a, a significant edge on their morale as well. Uh, there are still advantage to the Russians in terms of the forces, but in terms of their ability for esprit and morale and so forth and fighting for freedoms, that's on the side of the Ukrainians. So that will be even a longer fight. And I'm sure it has Putin and his generals befuddled to, to, to a very significant degree. And that's why you're going to see the escalation of very heavy artillery. Uh, ballistic missiles on mobile uh, platforms. You're going to see air power come in to try to destroy the morale, again, of the civilian population, but also of the, uh, of the Ukrainian military. And another miscalculation on Russia, Russia's part seems to be the lack of control over Ukrainian airspace. Isn't that one of the first things strategically you, you need to do to win a war? 
Absolutely. Uh, the first thing you want to do is you want to gain air superiority. We saw that in, in Desert Storm in January of 1991. And therefore, we uh, and, and when we you know tried to and we did very successfully pound uh, Saddam Hussein and, and so forth. But that has not happened here. In fact, the Ukrainians still maintain some monicum of air superiority, which means are very, it, it can limit the movement of your forces on the ground and you continue to harass, but also engage and destroy targets on the ground uh, is a what I would call a force multiplier in the favor of the Ukrainians. But that, again, it's a fledging Air Force. We've still got many days and nights to fight here. Uh, we'll see how that pans out. But so far, the Ukrainians have maintained uh, air superiority, and in turn, they've maintained one or two steps ahead of the Russian army at this point. And when we talk about this battle for the skies, right, the U.S. sending in Stinger missiles, you were talking about the weaponry. Those are used to shoot down Russian helicopters. Will that make a big difference, though, in Ukraine's ability to defend itself? It will, but only to a certain extent. That is mainly what I would call a tactical uh, weapon that's very effective. Again, also javelins against anti-tanks and so forth. But really, there there's very little defenses that the Ukrainians have or can get access to against these ballistic missiles. But it's not only just the ballistic missiles. By the way, there's a, I believe my numbers tell me about 480 ballistic missiles have been fired since night one. And now our, our numbers are saying about half of those missiles have now been fired from Russian positions inside of Ukraine, which means they've been mobilized. The other aspect of this that can really cause harm to the Ukrainian forces is cruise missiles being employed by Russian bombers uh, coming in and out of uh, Russian to Ukrainian airspace or so forth. I'm waiting for that car to play even more dominating. And the Russians, oh, I apologize for stepping on you there. The Russians still have not been able to take Kyiv, but they do seem to be gaining ground near the south or in the south near the Black Sea. How important is control over waterways and ports in this conflict? Well, it's very important. The fact that the south, uh, again, that's down by the Crimea region, that's mainly, uh, however, been very much uh, in, in favor of the Russians because of the Russian speaking and so forth. And and from the past several years, that has really been under the Crimea, especially was annexed by uh, Russia back in 2014. It also creates a, uh, again, if you cut off the south, as we see on the map here against the Black Sea, that means it, it there are landlines that you can still can for the Russians to be able to resupply from the south. And also, you're not going to be able to have any type of, of ports or support from the south, especially from the Black Sea, to resupply the Ukrainians. So it's significant that they have now pretty much taken the that whole coastline there as we're looking at and will likely move west towards Odessa as well to continue the complete cutoff of the Black Sea and that uh, portion of the, the war uh, for this point. All right, Lieutenant General Newton, thank you. We appreciate it. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.